Tuesday. Thank you for hopping on our Tuesday huddle. I'm absolutely loving these calls. I am so excited to hear from my dear friend, Christy Moser. She's a sideline sister of mine, and we have hit it off from the second that we met each other. Her story always inspires me. She inspires me. She always pours belief over everybody, and I cannot wait for you guys to hear her story tonight and some of her tips and tricks of how she does it full-time worker and rocks her plexus business. Yay. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Thank you guys for joining. And I am just like honored really, because these calls have been so valuable. So I just really pray that everybody will get some value out of tonight too. If you guys work outside the home, could you drop a one in the comments? And if you um, have a team member who works outside the home, drop a two in the comments. We're all going to get in our, our comments on here. And I love to like light up the chats for these calls. I'll just tell you a little bit about me while you're doing that. I live in central California. If you look at a map of California and you try to find the very tiny middle of California, that is where I live in the very middle. So I've lived there my whole life. I have worked um, in the same job for 20 years. It's actually the same building. I started as a bank teller when I was 19 years old. I dropped out of college because I didn't know what else I was going to do. And I just started working there full time. And you guys, if you stay there long enough, they'll let you be in charge. So now I'm the bank manager and I love, honestly, I do love working and I love my job there. Um, and so I'm here to tell you, you can be a plexus jewel and work full time if that is what you feel called to do. It's a blessing to me to be able to serve my people at the bank. And I love serving in plexus too. And multiple streams of income is where it's at, you guys. So can I get an amen? Because it is awesome. <laughs> so I also have to excuse myself that I am fighting a little bit of an evil cred. So if I have to sneeze or grab a tissue, I may have to go off camera just for a brief second, but I'm praying for a little miracle that I won't have to do that. So um, just a little bit about me, you guys, is that I have three kids. I've been married for 20 years. My husband has his own business. I'm working at the bank full time and I fell in love with Plexus. Um, I did not want to fall in love with Plexus. I was a customer for 18 months. I didn't tell a soul that I was taking these products, but our finances sucked. And I was praying for an opportunity to add income to our household. And as I'm asking God for how this is going to happen, the voices of all of my friends and all their health issues started to get a lot louder. And I realized that this is what he wanted me to do. So I very reluctantly in January of 2017 started posting about Plexus. And in 2020 of May, we became an Emerald team. And all of this happened. This That was the same year to January 17. I started sharing Plexus that same year. I got promoted to bank manager. So you can have a busy job and still develop an awesome Plexus business. So I want you guys to know there are lots of jewels who still choose to work full time because they love their work, right? So I just want you guys to hear that because I think there's a little bit of maybe of an old school myth that once you become a jewel, you quit your job and that's totally great if that's what people wanna do, but we get to have choices. And that's what I feel like multiple streams of income give us. That's what Plexus gives us is choices and options. And if we don't want to go to work anymore, maybe we don't have to, maybe we could do something different. So it's just, um, it's such a blessing. My husband was able to stay home um, last year with our kids while their schools were closed. That was a huge blessing, um, but he is back to work now because I'm all about those multiple income streams. <laughs> so um, let's talk about this a little bit, but um, I just want to dispel some myths that, you know, I think people think that there's so much security in having a nine to five job. And when I talk about doing Plexus full time, the first thing my mom says is, well, what about the benefits? And what about the security of having a job? And I'm like, mom, they close bank branches like that, like nothing. Okay. So there's what if the real security is within ourselves and our own capability and what we can do? So I'm here to empower everyone to know that, yes, you can have a great job. Yes, you can have a great Plexus business, but it all comes down to our own commitment and our own work ethic and what we're willing to make happen and our belief in ourselves to make it happen. So 
Plexus gave me something, you guys, honestly, that I just did not have before. And that was the ability to dream. Working at a bank um, for, it was, I had worked there for, I guess, 17 years um, before I started doing this. And that, that was my, that's all I knew. That's, I didn't get a degree. I didn't know anything else. So I thought this is, this is it for me. Um, so when I started doing Plexus, I started to realize like when you see the possibilities of what can happen, your brain starts to go into this new imaginary mode where you start to think thoughts you've never thought before. And so I would love to know if anybody can tell me, did they get a new dream when they started doing Plexus? Did you get a new dream that you hadn't thought of before? Something you never thought would be possible that now you think is possible. You got this dream in your heart that you didn't have before. That's the beauty of Plexus. Um, I would love to see that. And okay, so I'm going to keep, I'm going to dive right into notebook material here. Hopefully you guys like taking notes. I love to take notes. Um, I'm a planner person. I'm going to talk about my planner because I love my favorite thing to talk about. Um, but okay, guys. So number one, my number one tip for, I don't even want to say like, it's really not, it's not just for working folks, guys. This is for everybody. Um, decide that you are in this. You need to make this decision because you guys, if you haven't decided that you are for sure going to do this, no matter what, like you are not going to quit, no matter what happens, that is actually slowing you down big time because there's this drama happening in your brain all the time of should I, shouldn't I, what if this, what if that? And what's happening is maybe we're only willing to work when it feels good, when our upline has a contest, when our downline is actually working, when um, everyone's liking your posts, then you're allowing your circumstances to dictate your own commitment. So what I had to do for myself was decide, I am going to do this no matter what, like I'm in this, I'm if, if I have to continue working for another five or 10 years, if I, whatever it is, guys, I, I'm not gonna allow the circumstances to dictate my commitment level. You guys, you know, when we do that, when we allow our circumstances to dictate our power, we give away all of our power. We don't have it anymore because it's all in this bubble of what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, if this person would do this, then I would do that. So deciding right now, you guys, that, you are in this for real, you are going to speed up your success so much because you're not going to have this what if drama happening in your brain. Um, so I really want to make sure if anybody hasn't decided that they are in this, it really comes down to your belief. So the only way we can really make a sincere decision about this is, this is why we talk about belief all the time, right? This is why your leaders and plexus, everybody's like belief, belief. Yes. Because if we truly believed that our success was inevitable and that everyone wants what we have, then we can wake up every day knowing for sure this is what we need to do. Like there isn't even a question about your commitment because you know what's possible. If So that's why it's so important to continue feeding your belief. Listen to the podcast, listen to the diamond documentaries. Like you have to keep feeding that all the time and that's a really, that's like one of my biggest tips for working people. I know every, for everybody, like I'm having a hard time distinguishing because it's really for everyone. We all have to work on our belief, but I think um, we can kind of get attracted to certain things in our um, nine to five and say, well, I'll just work harder over here in my nine to five and I'll ignore my plexus business. Um, but guys, don't do that. Know that you have, we have something so special here with our residual income, with our products. I'm going to have to take a drink now. One second. Okay. So that's my number one. Decide you are in this. Okay. Number two, this is big. Be intentional. There's a lot of thoughts that we have around the topic of time and how much time is it going to take and um, how much time do I have? And what if I wanna spend my time with this and I wanna do my time with that? Like there's so much drama in our brains around time. It kind of comes back to belief though, guys. When you have unstoppable belief, 
your work schedule, your kids' sports, your family drama, none of that will be an issue anymore because you will find the time for what you really believe in and what's a, what's a priority for you. If you really believe that you have this unbelievable residual income waiting for you and that that's going to be the answer to your family's prayers, you're going to figure it out a way to make time for it. Having said that, I wanna talk some specifics about time. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to offend anyone who has said these words before. But when I started in Plexus, there was a lot of talk around the term nooks and crannies. Has anyone ever heard that term? <laughs> Sorry, guys. So the term was that you can work Plexus in the nooks and crannies of your day, and you can. I've done it. What I think this narrative um, looked like for me was that I was always looking to my phone because I wasn't being intentional with my time. I was like, it was just this big question mark in the air. Like, when am I going to get back to this message? Oh, I'll do it right now. Okay. I better grab my phone and take it to the bathroom with me. Otherwise I'm not going to be able to make a post today. Like that was kind of how it ended up being for me. And what I noticed for people on my team is that they start to feel like they're on their phone all day long and they start saying things like that. I work my Plexus business all day long. Well, they're not really working all day long. They're just getting to it when they can because they actually haven't budgeted an intentional time. Now, what I've learned and it's learned, you guys, everything that we do is learned, by the way, it's all skills. I didn't, I learned how to make good posts. I made the crappiest posts ever in 2017. Okay. So we learn how to be intentional with our time and we learn how to do work more efficiently. We learn how to do all these things. But when I know in my brain that I'm going to spend two hours working between five and 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, I'm not panicking that my phone's blowing up between nine and 10 p.m. Right. I don't go running to it because I have to answer those messages because I already know I'm going to be working in the morning and I can address everything at that time. So that takes away a lot of drama when we have this intentional idea. Now I'm a big proponent of getting up early. So I'll just tell you guys, I was not a big getting up early kind of girl before, but there's so much peace and freedom in getting up early, having peace and quiet and no distractions and getting it done. No one is going to call you and ask you to come pick them up from school at 5 a.m. But if you're planning on doing everything on your lunch break, like just going to speak to my working girls here, because if you think you can do all of it on your, your lunch break, I know how this goes. And your lunch break gets filled up with grocery runs, running to the kids' school. You have to run home to get something that someone forgot. So getting it all done in the morning is so, so valuable. Um, I use a planner and I just, you guys, I don't want to push my planner religion on anybody, but I don't know how anybody does this business without a planner. So if you don't have one and you're feeling like, I don't know how to do my business, I don't know how to be intentional, maybe this would be the answer for you. I've only been using a planner for two years because I told myself I wasn't a planner person, but I love it so much. And what I do is I sit down on Sundays and I write it all out what I'm going to do. And that's how I can be intentional throughout the week. Um, I also have a tip that's sort of new that I wasn't doing before, but it's super helpful to me is I used to call Sundays my day of rest, but it turns out I was getting up early and doing a bunch of stuff that I would still do work. I would go to church and I would work for like five hours doing ministry stuff at church. And then I would come home and it was more stuff to do. And I felt like this isn't, this doesn't feel like a day of rest to me. <laughs> and then on Monday we start all over again and go back to work. So I decided that Saturdays were going to start being my day of rest. And I just, so I would just say that's, that's a recommendation from, from me is just to start budgeting that in um, and say, I'm going to work really hard to not be on a zoom call on this day. I'm going to work really hard not to, to have a post that's pre-scheduled or whatever it is, you know, something, maybe someone else is going to post in your team page that day. Maybe you're not even going to make a post on social media and that's going to be okay. It's not a problem. So that's, those are some of my tips for just um, around time because I feel like that's a really big topic. Um, 
that comes up. And it was a big um, kind of a trigger for me as I was figuring out how to do all of this. I want you guys to know that like I've done it all the ways. I've done the nooks and crannies. I've done the staying up late. I've done it all the different ways, but this is what's really working for me in this season. Okay, how am I doing? Okay, is it 616? Okay, I'm gonna wrap up in a few more minutes and then can do questions or whatever you guys want. Um, my number three is to be okay with working and the work that's required to do what we do. I think, can you guys hear Sheila Medina say it? If it was easy, it would be sleazy. And I don't wanna have a sleazy business and I don't think anybody here wants to have a sleazy business either. So when we go to our normal jobs, we show up for X amount of hours and we expect to get paid X amount of dollars. And nobody thinks that's a problem, right? So why is it a problem when we tell people that they can make money with Plexus, but we don't want to tell them that there's work involved? Why is this a problem? It's because there's this narrative that I think probably I've helped perpetuate too, that this is like an easy paycheck. And I'm not saying that it's, you know, excruciating work, but it is work. And I don't want us to sell it as though it isn't. And I don't think that people think that work is a problem. Do you guys hear me on this one? That we've kind of like made our work a problem for other people when it's really not a problem at all. It, it, it's okay for them. They're going to see the value of building a residual income of laying a solid foundation for something that's going to be paying them back for decades. People see the value of that. Like it's so obvious that you're going to have, anytime you start a business, you're going to have to put in a bunch of work, maybe for not as much money as you would like. And then later it's all worth it. So I don't know why we make that a problem, but I want us to just stop that narrative now and say, yes, it's work. It's awesome work. And it's going to be completely worth all of the effort because I'm building something that I'm so proud of. Okay, here I go with my tissues. Um, I wrote a note here, but it just really goes back to the, if it was easy, it was sleazy. But if we're selling this opportunity as an easy paycheck, we're building a cheap business. Because what happens is when we bring people in and tell them that it's easy and then it's not easy, we lose credibility and we lose those people. Why can't we bring them in and say, this is awesome work. I'm going to do the work with you. I love this work. You're going to enjoy learning how to do this too. We're going to serve people together and we're going to build something that we're both proud of. Um, and I really do believe probably everyone on this call falls into this category, but people who value what this opportunity means for their future and they are willing to work for it, sacrifice for it, learn whatever skills they have to learn so that they can have it. Can you guys tell me in the chat, like if you are in this group, you get that this is worth figuring out whatever you have to figure out in order to succeed in this. And that it's really inevitable if you have that attitude. Absolutely. So I would, um, I would just challenge you to hold your audience to this level because you guys are all willing to put the work in. You see the vision, but I think we don't, we don't think other people can see it. And I'm guilty of this myself because I think when I put the opportunity out there immediately, I have these thoughts that, oh, they don't want to do the work. Oh, um, they're probably going to quit if they don't get someone in the first, you know, 30 days. And I, all of these narratives start to come up, right? And why are we not just pouring out this belief that like, no matter how long it takes, it would be worth it for them. Right guys. So that is my three things that I wanted to share with you guys. Decide that you're in it to be intentional with your time and to be okay with the work. Um, and I don't know if that's, um, exactly what we were hoping for. This is just what God put on my heart to share. So um, I'll turn it back over to you guys for any questions or anything. Hey, Christy, can I ask you a question? Yeah. 
will you share with everybody one, what planner you're loving and yes. two, a little bit of what your IPA during your day, because you have to be more structured. What does that look like for you? Yeah. So this is the planner I use. It's called the Christian planner. I don't know if this is going to be your favorite planner, but I would say do the um, research to figure out if you think this is going to be good for you. It has lots of room for note taking. So like everything I was going to say for this call, I had room to write out like every week it has two blank pages and then it has, um, my whole week. Let me see if I can find like my whole week here. So I can write in people's names. You can write a list. I didn't write a list this week, but like a list of tasks or whatever, you know, that you need to accomplish. It has a little daily habit tracker. So if you really like checking boxes, um, any other Enneagram threes out there that love doing that kind of thing, your water, your supplements, your prayer time, your whatever, your IPA, you could write it all in there. Um, I recently adopted a new IPA, which is I got from Sapphire Angela Beller. If you guys didn't catch her on the training yesterday, she did Motivation Monday and she shared her birthday system. And she breaks it all down in that call. So if you guys can't find that call, I think it's in the Plex. That she just did it yesterday. And I was like, I have to make sure I tell them about this. But the birthday system is super wonderful. And it's basically a sampling system. And she's famous for getting everyone, not everyone, but she sends out her messages every, um, every day, the same message. And she gets a lot of people signed up before their samples even arrive. So um, Anyway, so that's kind of been like my new daily practice. I try to post in my team page every day and I make some kind of a post on my Facebook wall um, and my Instagram as well. Um, my Instagram is really more geared towards like serving um, working women. I've kind of just recently discovered that that's what I feel like I can talk about a lot. And then I do my stories. I, I try to load up my stories like in the morning so that I have something always going in there. I use the... Um, whatever Facebook pages that have tons of graphics in there, I'll often pull from those. Um, if I have time on the weekends, on Sunday is a work day for me now. So I'll try to make some graphics and some things that I'm going to post throughout the week. But it does, um, following up with my people, getting to my back office, um, looking at credit card declines, looking at perks reports, it's not the same thing every day. But if you guys just decide to plan it out, like Wednesday can be your perks report, report day and your credit card declines can be on Fridays and that kind of thing. So uh, making sure that I'm always like knowing who's um, sponsoring people and who's getting ready to rank up. Um, I kind of like to go in there because throughout the day, guys, I just, I really truly do not look at my phone between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Like it was, we, we got out of the bank so fast so I could be on this call right now. We got to go guys. So, um, <laughs> we, um, but honestly, like I, that's the way it has to be, but I feel like it's so it's called the Christian planner. And if you just type in Christian planner on Facebook, you'll see a bunch of ads that come up. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what it looks like for me. Well, thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, we do have a couple of minutes left. If you want to put it in the chat or unmute yourself, um, I love a couple of things you said, and one of them you just kind of said in passing when you said you used to tell yourself you what you um, you weren't a planner. I think that mm -hmm. happens a lot, right? That's like that self fulfilling uh, prophecy. Where you're like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not a planner, or mm -hmm. I don't do Facebook lives, or I don't like to work out. Like whatever we tell ourselves just reinforces um, that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Autumn, Autumn, thank you for mentioning that. She's the one who introduced me to this Christian planner. It's her fourth year using that one. And I'm sure there's a lot of good ones, but when you find the one that works, you're like, I ain't getting another planner ever. It's just this one. Um, so yeah, I, I think um, it's just like what you said. It's just the, the thoughts that we, um, that we tell ourselves. And I'm going to tell you guys working um, and doing Plexus is such a blessing because you get to use so many of the skills that you learn um through your plexus journey to serve in the workplace um so i just want to like shout out anybody who thinks they can't do both you can and wherever god has you um he is using you to bless those people every day so just be looking for those opportunities to serve and um and i, I just really pray that you'll find fulfillment in both and 
Can I, let me also add on the flip side of that. There are some people who have become jewels or maybe even they hit a rank that allowed them to stay home and then they went back to work and they see that as a failure. And I just want to also kind of take that away on the back end. Like mm-hmm. there are so many times where I've thought about going back to get a job just because I want to get out of the house and meet new people. You know, not that now I don't want a full time 40 hour going in the office. <laughs> that's, you know, I like I'm in my PJ pants, but just to get out, meet new people, not be sitting by myself in my office all day. So take that yeah. shit away too, like on the other end. Yeah, um, nobody, I think there's, nobody yeah, there's this like cursed narrative about this nine to five thing. And it's just not, it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, totally. I love that. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. This was fabulous. I hope everyone has an awesome holiday just for a reminder. In fact, Sarah and Kate remind me if I'm correct. We do not have one next week. Correct. But we're, our, our, yes, the following week after next week, we're taking the week off for the holidays, yep. not off of our businesses, just off of the calls. That's right. <laughs> um, and we will, we will continue back on the 28th. And Amy, I was also going to follow up and just remind you guys, we have just over two weeks left of Q4 success sprints to earn leaders retreat for those who are still pushing to earn or pushing guys. A lot can happen in two weeks. I've seen people go from a rank hit a rank and then go to a whole nother rank in two weeks. You can totally do it if you're willing to work for it. Use a lot of, you know, what we learned tonight with Christy and put it into action and show up and you can absolutely still do it. So you have a little over two weeks still to do that as well. Great reminder. All right. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have an awesome week. And remember, keep working your business this week so you can enjoy the time with your family next week. Bye guys. Merry Christmas.